Okay, here in section 4.4, we're going to learn how to graph by hand the sine and the cosine function. And so just some definitions to get us going. Um, first of all, a periodic function is a function that repeats its y values at regular intervals. And so if you remember back to when we learned the unit circle in section 4.1 through 4.3, remember that sine and cosine repeated the same values over and over. The one half, the square root of two over two, the square root of three over two get repeated in each quadrant. And so you can see that sine and cosine are periodic functions because those y values are repeating at regular intervals. Whenever we say period here in a, uh, definition B, a period is how long it takes for a periodic function to repeat itself. Or another way to say that is that it is the length of one cycle. So however long it takes for those y values to repeat, that would be what we consider the period. And then finally, the amplitude. The amplitude is the distance. And so in that word distance is the implication that the amplitude is always going to be positive because we consider distance to be positive. It's the distance from the midline of the function to a maximum or a minimum. And that will make more sense once we um, start working some examples, but just a quick picture here um, of what a sine function looks like. You've got a wave that looks like this. And so my uh, midline would go through the middle of that function. So it basically just cuts the function in half vertically. And then the amplitude is the distance from the midline to a max or a min. So either here or here, that would be your amplitude. And we're gonna call that capital A. Okay, here we're going to just take a look at this picture of the sine function. And so this is one period of the sine graph. You can see that it starts at the origin, it then ends at two pi. And so the period or the length of one cycle for this particular function sine of x is two pi. And by the way, I wanna reiterate that this is the parent function. So it's not always necessarily going to be 2 pi if we have a horizontal shrink or stretch. But if we are talking about the regular parent sine function, then the period is 2 pi. So you take a look at, uh, at the picture there. The rest of the graph is made up of repetitions of this portion. And so what that means is that we're not looking at the entire graph here. This basically continues on and on and on this way and this way. And so the, the, the fact of the matter is the domain of this is going to be negative infinity until infinity. Now, any part of the graph that corresponds to one period is considered to be one cycle. And so that would fill in that particular blank. The domain is negative infinity to infinity. The range on the y-axis would be from negative one to one. And since we actually have points at negative one and one, we're going to use brackets to indicate the range. And then finally, sine of x is an odd function. And if you remember back from chapter one, if a function is odd, that means it has symmetry to the origin. Okay, here we're going to focus on the points of a sine graph because truth be told, the only real differences between a sine and a cosine function is the order in which the points occur or are graphed. And so again, just bringing it back to the unit circle, remember that sine went one, two, three in the numerator and that cosine went three, two, one. And so those, that's the only difference between the function is that um, the, the order of the points are a little bit different. So we're still talking about sine x here one complete period of the sine graph has one, two, three x-intercepts. And they occur at the beginning of a period, and then the midway point, if you wanna call it that, or you could say halfway through the period, and at the end. Okay, now a quarter of the way through the period, we see here that this is a 
maximum. And so a one quarter of the way through the period, we have a maximum. Three quarters of the way through the period would be here, and that is a minimum point. Okay, so what's going to be helpful is if we write the order of these points as our summary here. And so as a summary, what is the order of these points? Well, you start with an x-intercept, which I'm just going to call a zero. You then go to a maximum. That would be this point right here. You then go to this point, which is another zero. Finally, you go to three quarters of the way through the period, which is a min and you finish up the period with another zero. So that's the order of points that you'll need to remember for sine of x, zero, max, zero, min, zero. We're always going to plot five points for one period, and they're always going to be in that order for a sine function. Okay, cosine, as you can see in this picture right here, looks similar to sine. It is a wave, a periodic function that repeats its y values, but it does not start at the origin like sine does. It starts at a maximum and then finishes at a maximum over here at two pi. And so this period goes from zero until two pi. And that means that the period, again, for the parent graph of cosine would be two pi. The rest of the graph is going to be made up of repetitions. We'll see if I can spell that word. There we go, repetitions of this portion. Any part of the graph that corresponds to one full period, we would just also use the phrase that it would be one cycle of cosine x. Now, because it's made up of repetitions, that means that the domain is gonna be negative infinity to infinity. Notice that the range is also going to be negative one to one. Cosine is an even function because it has symmetry to the y-axis. Okay, and here is the really the major difference between the sine and the cosine function. So again, we are discussing the cosine function here. One complete cycle of the cosine function has two x-intercepts, one here and one here, and they occur one quarter and three quarters of the way through the period. Now, we also have these two points that would be exactly the same and those are maximums. And so a maximum point is going to start your period and it is going to end your period. So at the beginning and the end, you're going to have a maximum and then halfway through the period, you are going to have a minimum point. And so for sine of x, we know the order is zero max, zero min, zero. But for cosine x, Looking at the picture, we start at a maximum, we then go to a zero, in the middle would be a minimum, another zero or x-intercept, and then finally ending with a maximum point. So that is the order of points that you'll need to remember for cosine x, and again, that's the major difference between sine and cosine. They are essentially the exact same function just shifted over, which means that uh, cosine is going to have slightly different order of points than cosine does. Okay, obviously we're not always going to graph just the parent function of sine x and cosine x, and so there are different variations of these graphs that we'll know how to uh, have to know how to handle. And so there's four things, um, really five things, that we're going to identify on each problem whenever we graph. And as we get going, it's, we're really gonna sort of introduce these um, progressively. So what I mean by that is I'm not gonna give you a problem in example one that has all five of these things, but we're going to gradually work our way up to all of these, where all of these might be present in the problem. So firstly, the amplitude, remember we said that was the distance from the max or the min to the middle of the function. So it's basically how tall your wave is, that is always told to you by the coefficient in front of sine or cosine. And furthermore, remember we said that amplitude was always a distance, and so to find the amplitude, we're just going to take the absolute value of a. Now, if the, the leading coefficient is negative, the negative, remember, is just gonna be a reflection over the x-axis. And so essentially what that's going to do then is flip all of your maxes 
and mins, meaning all of the maxes will become minimums and all of the minimums will become maximums. Now, to find the period, the formula for that is going to equal to 2 pi divided by b, where b is the number in front of x. So you can see here that b is the coefficient of x in both of these formulas. 2 pi divided by that number is going to give you the period. Now, for the phase shift, this is very important. In order to find the phase shift, what you're going to have to do is factor out the B. Now, in order to do that, here's what is going to happen. You're going to just factor it out, and that's going to leave you with X minus C divided by B. Now, let me say a couple of more things about this. C over B, then, is your phase shift, but the minus would make it go, the graph go to the right. If it said x plus c over b, that would mean that it would go to the left. So maybe just a couple of examples so that this makes sense here. If I have 3 times x minus pi over 2, then the phase shift here is going to be positive pi over 2. If I say, okay, one more example, if I have 4 and then I have uh, x plus 3 pi over 2, then in that particular case, we would say the phase shift is negative 3 pi over 2, which means that the graph would start to the left of 0 on the x-axis at negative 3 halves. And so that's the important point there that I want to make sure that you catch up on, is that the phase shift is always your starting x value. That is what the phase shift represents is that it is the starting x value so that's very important to know is where am i going to begin graphing this on the x-axis and that is always told to you by your phase shift now if your function for example is just y equals sine of let's say 3x okay well notice that there's no plus or minus a number after that 3x therefore the phase shift of that function would just be zero which means that zero would be the starting x value when you go to graph your five points. Okay, the vertical shift is told to you by the constant at the end of the equation, and so that would be capital D. Um, you can see here, this is where I'm getting that from, capital D, and that is going to tell you um, what your starting y value is. Um, starting y value and then to figure out what your other y values are because there will be three of them minimums maximums and zeros to figure out what your other y values are you're going to use the amplitude so in blue here I'm gonna circle one and four just to tell you that those two things go together now once you have the phase shift that's the starting x value. But how do you figure out the other x values? And that is done by using what's called the x increment. So the x increment, the formula for it is to take your period and divide by four. This will tell you what to count by on the x axis. So I'm just gonna say here what to count by, or another way to say that is add to your x values because eventually we're going to end up with five x values which comes from our order of points that we discussed earlier well once i get my phase shift i just use my x increment to add until i get five x values total so once you get that phase shift that's one and then you're going to have to get four more by adding the the x increment which is period divided by four and then finally, once you do that, graph five key points in order. And the order is determined by whether you are graphing a sine or a cosine. Sine would be zero, max, zero, min, zero. Cosine would be max, zero, min, zero, max.